Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Session Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the face in my resistance to truth Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, Face in My Resistance to Truth. Recorded on the 8th of March, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay. Well, let's uh, replace the word faith with the word truth. And this becomes then the Facing My Resistance to Truth Q&A. All right. Now, you notice when we talk about faith, it sort of feels like interesting to talk about. And most of you are more interested in a conversation about faith. It has some interesting, you know, I interesting thoughts that come out with faith. But when it comes to truth, it's, oh, no, here we go again, isn't it? I would like to just ask you, and I will talk to you a little bit in the Q&A about this relationship that you seem to have thinking that, that love is possible without truth. Most of you believe that. You, you almost believe like you can ask for God's love while at the same time rejecting God's truth. You believe that. Now, in the, it, when you hear the recordings of these sessions in the first group, we actually had a whole feedback with the group about that, about the relationship between love and truth and the necessity for us to see that they are joined together and they can't operate independently. Right. Very important thing to understand for your progression. You can't hope to progress in love unless you're willing to become more open, transparent, and truthful, honest in your life. You can't do it. We start with Natalie and then come to Tara. <coughs> I've had an experience once where I asked God to show me how God feels about me. Mm -hmm. And it was really beautiful. But afterwards, it only stayed for a little while. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of unworthy emotions and, and ideas that I have about myself that are in contrast to what God showed me. And while I can reflect back to that. Can you, can you see, can I just stop you straight, sure. straight away? You're saying that there's unworthy emotions that are in contrast with God's emotions. But the reality is that's not what I feel from you, right? What I feel from you is in fact this belief that you want things to be your way and not God's way, right? Now that's arrogance, that's not unworthiness. And you're guessing what it is. You're trying to guess what it is. And I see many of you doing this with your emotions. You're trying to guess what the truth is rather than just feel what the emotion is. Right? When you feel, and this comes down to this personal truth issue, right? So let's look at my truth again. My truth is really just a bunch of emotions some of which are true from God's perspective and others of which are not true from God's perspective. Right? Now, what we have a tendency of doing as humans, because we're slippery, slimy creatures, we probably should be called eels instead of humans, <laughs> because what we do is we try to weasel our way out and I don't, I, it's probably bad for the weasel to say that, but because um, most of them don't do this. Um, we try to weasel our way out of facing up to the real emotions. That's what we do. And then we think that's the reason why we haven't had an extended experience with God. Right? We want to guess the reason why without knowing the reason why. You follow? And this is what many of you are doing. You're trying to guess the reason why love isn't flowing rather than just feeling. Because if you could feel, you would know the reason why. And, and in this case, Natalie, frequently you are in argumentation with God. You're in an argument with God. Right? You would like the world to be your way. Right? You even do that in your family thing. It's all like, a lot to do with your way. Right? And you, you want, this is how you want the world to be, your way. 
And, and that's going to prevent the flow of love. Now, wanting the world to be your way is not driven by emotions of unworthiness, is it? No. It's driven by addictions, by, by desires to have your addictions met and so forth thinking that your addictions are worth more than the addictions of the people around you even. So it's actually a tendency to believe that your feelings are more important than others, which is actually a sense of superiority over others rather than a feeling of a lack of worth. So while I agree that you do have a lack of worth when it comes to your relationship with God, so here's God, and here is you, you do have a lack of worth when it comes to your relationship with God, right? When it comes to your relationship with half the human population, men, you believe yourself to be superior. You believe they are lesser than you. They, they should serve you. They, they should give you what you want. They're lesser than you. You are superior to them, is what you believe. So there's superiority... Superior, superior, superior and inferior. You believe men are inferior. Therefore, there's an imbalance in the way in which you see yourself in comparison with other people. Now, from God's perspective, is that right? Isn't from God's perspective everyone equal? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so the real issue I feel you face when you're having, interacting with God is you interact with God, you receive a little bit of love, then it turns off, and then you think it's because you feel an emotion of unworthiness. But actually, from God's perspective, a lot of the times it's because you feel superior to other people. And that's why God can't give you any more love. God wants you to recognize this problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and this is where I quite often observe the majority of you choosing your truth. And that's not the same as feeling God's truth. That's not the same. You're, you're actually resistant to God's truth in that state. You're not feeling God's truth. You're resistant to it. Right? And, and this is what I observe many doing, many of you doing. And, and what I've just said to Nat applies to many of you ladies, right? You, you do believe yourself to be uh, superior to men. You believe you should be able to demand things of men. Men should give you what you want. If they don't give you what you want, they're bastards and so forth, right? There is that feeling inside of you. So that is a feeling of superiority over men. That, that's what it is. It's not. You may still feel inferior with God, but you do believe yourself to be better than men. Now God's saying, hang on a sec. <laughs> I created all people equal. Men and women are equal in my sight. My feelings are the same for men and women. <coughs> God's feelings are the same. That's what God's trying to share with you. As soon as you begin to feel the, these other things, you, you're basically trying to guess what God's feeling. And, and you're trying to guess what the truth is. And I, and I think you should just give that up. Stop trying to guess what, like, honestly, there's barely been a single emotion I've ever experienced that I've actually guessed correctly before I experienced it. Honestly, like, there's a few, but hardly any. And I've, I've experienced thousands of different emotions, obviously, and I'm saying, like, there's probably only a handful that I guessed beforehand. So give up the process of guessing. Allow the process of feeling. And allow the process of feeling. And, and also allow the process of discovering the truth from God's perspective, not your own. Right? Now, many of you do want God to believe what you want to believe about yourself. In other words, you want God to accept your facade. And God's not going to do it because that's not God's truth about you. God created a better person, you, than you could ever create for yourself, your facade. Right? Your facade is what you've created or the environment has assisted you in creating. That's never going to be as good as the real person God created. God wants a relationship with a real person, not with a facade. In fact, from God's perspective, it's impossible for God to have a relationship with your facade. 
So stop trying to guess what the truth is inside of yourself and just let yourself feel and also accept God's truth. From it, 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 Once you do that, it's quite a simple process, right? It is quite a simple process. We don't have to guess things anymore. Isn't that wonderful? You just get told things <laughs> rather than guessing them, right? Thanks. Yeah, it's much better for you. Yeah. So where were we next? It was, yes, Tara. Is... Um Shame, feeling shame and embarrassment when you've received some truth, whether it's from a little child or you or whoever, is that like one of the big blocks to really feeling what the truth is about? Because I find that I go straight into really feeling shame and embarrassment and, and humiliated, and then that kind of just, just stops me. I sort of get caught up in that. So you feel shame, embarrassed... Is it double R? I think so. <laughs> One R. <laughs> double R? Two R's? Two R's. One R, two R's? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Y. C. I don't know. I don't care either. Shame, embarrassment, what was the other? And humili yeah, humiliated. Humiliated. It's double R, is it? Yeah. The The... The spell checker got out and it's a double R. Double S. Or is it one S? <laughs> well, humili humiliated. Yep, humiliated. Yep, spelling never my strong point. I barely know how to speak English properly. Um, now, okay, a few, just a few emotions there. But, but the reality is we could list other emotions, couldn't we? Like sad angry, resentful, about hearing truth, I mean, you know, and so forth and so forth. So the problem isn't the emotion. So you're trying to make the emotion the problem. That's not the problem. The I problem is that you don't want to feel it. I'm not wanting to feel these ones yeah. first. And yeah, yeah so I kind of you feel don't. I want to run away from the, from, the you embarrassment want. and the shame. I just want to absolutely run away from it. Exactly. So the problem isn't the emotion. And, and this is very important that each of you understand this. Having an emotion within you that's out of harmony of love is not the real problem. The real problem is your refusal to feel it. Because if you felt it, it would be released from you. Mm. So the real problem is re refusal to feel the emotion. That's the thing that needs to be addressed. Then the question then becomes, well, why are you so afraid to feel the emotion? That's the real question, isn't it? Right? And that's the thing you need to address, and that's the thing you're not addressing. You, you always focus your attention on the emotion, and you say to yourself, I've got to feel this, I've got to feel this, I've got to feel this. Instead of feeling, I don't want to feel this. Mm. I don't want to feel this emotion, and let yourself feel why you don't want to feel the emotion. You follow? Yeah. Yeah. Now, many of you then cause yourself to jump to all sorts of reasons, tr what you call your tr truth, which you believe is God's truth, about why you don't want to feel it. But to, as I just said to you, if you choose to feel the emotion after you've felt the emotion, you will discover the reason why you didn't want to feel it. After you feel the emotion, you'll discover what the emotion was, even. After you feel the emotion, you'll discover what caused it. Yeah. After, not before. But the reason why most of you don't want to feel your real emotions is because you want to know everything beforehand. You want to know what it's going to feel like, how painful it's going to be, how long it's going to go. You want to know everything about it before you feel it. And this is where you get yourself into trouble with your emotions. I don't do that. Yeah, so... Like even if a little child comes up to, up to you and says something that, so you may immediately feel um, embarrassed about. Mm -hmm. So right then, Choose. the embarrassment is the f one thing to feel, and then you would feel the truth of what they were telling you, as in, as in. The, yeah, yeah, but see, where you've got to start is you don't want to feel embarrassed. Yeah. Right. So, so you don't want to have the feeling. So what you've got to start is, well, why don't you want to have the feeling of embarrassment? But isn't I'm um, like breaking out in a sweat and going all red in the face and feeling all funny in here, feeling it? Of course. 
ironically. <laughs> but you don't want to feel it, do you? No, but it no. feels like I can't <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no, you can't. This is the same with most of our emotion. We, we can't intellectually choose it very easily. So the, the, all, all of, many of you believe you can, and honestly, you're crazy. You're crazy believing you can. Because the reality is it's written on your face, it's in your demeanour, it's in your body, you know, you're, it's already happening, you know. Why do you want to try to control it? It's already going. Why don't you just <laughs> yeah. let it go and ha have the experience? Why not do that? It's easier. <laughs> yeah, as if the red face doesn't give it away. Hey? <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like, you know, like it's so, it's so easy to see the majority of times that somebody else is shutting down an emotion because because uh, you can already see that there's parts of the emotion being displayed in their body and in their face and how they look and everything right so you can obviously see it but but you're trying to shut it down and what i'm saying to you you have to address is why do you want to try to shut it down sure yeah Thanks. yeah rather than just allow allow got triggered allow it to occur yeah. You'll find the truth that way. You won't find the truth doing this other thing you do. The other thing you're often trying to do is you go, okay, what's this emotion about? Uh, you know, and this is all a way to prevent the emotion, actually. Trying to guess what it's about beforehand, trying to work it all out, trying to work out how long it's going to be, what it's related to, and all these other things are just an attempt to avoid the experience. Now, you go back to being a child. A child does not do that. You know, if a child's embarrassed, it's embarrassed. It goes bright red, it feels all the embarrassment and stuff, doesn't it? It's like, it's just embarrassed. It doesn't try to work out why it's embarrassed or anything. It just feels embarrassed. Same applies with sad. If a child's sad, what does it do? Just has a big cry, you know? If a child's angry, what does it do? It has a big anger fit in the floor, right? It doesn't judge the emotion and try to work out in advance what the emotion's about. We've, it's a learned behaviour to do that. And it's a bad, bad, a bad option from God's perspective. You're better off choosing the emotion and feeling the emotion. Yep. Dharma, thanks. Up the back, thanks, uh, guys. My, my question is, I'm working through the facade that I'm a good mother. Mm -hmm. And I've also asked God to show me what, how I've harmed my ch my children, mm -hmm. and then this very very painful emotion will wake up in me. Um, if I can have faith that I'll be able to survive that, yeah. will I then be able to not have to work through the facade layer all the way down? Will it take care of both at once? Your question is really about emotional processing work, and we'll talk about them more tomorrow. Yep, but uh, but yes, the answer obviously is yes. You know, like you, if you allow the emotions to process the blockages, the blockages you have to processing emotion once they are released means that you will allow the emotion to overcome you, and, and you will allow God to tell you the truth about things, and then it's up to the exercise of your will whether you enter a state of repentance or you enter a state of resistance. Does that make sense? I, I, I repentance being where you feel sorry for what you've done where you want to correct what you've done whether you where you look at the original cause of why you did it and those kind of things resistance being no i don't know want to know what i've done i don't want to feel what i've done i don't you know though that's the action of resistance but that is a choice of that's your choice yes the beauty of allowing god to tell you the truth is that now you know the truth and now you've got a choice to make whether you're going to Repent for it, or whether you're going to let the law of compensation grind its teeth away on you <laughs> until you <laughs> until you finish it. One of the two. I, I find that I enter repentance when I feel the emotion, but I stopped it because I didn't have faith that I'll be able to survive something that painful. Yes, and we'll talk about that from an emotional perspective tomorrow. This this con this belief that many of you have that you can't cope with emotion. It's a it's a very big false belief on the planet. In inculcated and and basically brainwashed into you from your childhood right so we'll talk about how that entered you tomorrow thank you yeah well we've got to finish now guys because i'm getting a bit behind so uh, that's the end of our q and a what we'll do is we'll have a 10 minute break if we can come back at quarter past three a 10 minute break and then we'll talk about our last subject for the for the day <coughs>